In this video, we will be looking at the XOR gate. So, you might recall that in the previous videos, we saw that all elementary gates such as OR gate, AND gate etcetera could be represented as simple uh, one layer or two layer uh, neural networks basically based on simple logistic regression. So, one of the first historical examples in the book Perceptrons by Minsky etcetera, one of the first counter examples for what all neural networks could do or what all elementary perceptrons could do was the XOR gate. So, what is XOR? So, XOR we will write once again as a truth table. So, XOR gives 1 or true as an output. So, I will just write it as XOR here. If X and Y or X1 and X2 are different, it gives 1 as output. If both are the same, it gives 0 as output. So, once again, let us try and represent this graphically in order to see what the problem is for logistic regression. Okay. So, in case of 0, 0, and 1 1 you get 0 and in case of 0 1 and 1 0 you get 1. Okay. So, we have two classes this red class or the x class and the o class. Now, we know that logistic regression the way it works is the z equal to 0 line which was the w 0 plus w 1 x 1 plus w 2 x 2 line equal to 0 would function as the classifying line. But unfortunately, you can see that no classification line here would work. Any line that you do cannot actually separate the x's out from the o's. This case is called this is not linearly separable. Please notice the word linearly. We can of course, make classification boundaries that are non-linear for example, this. This would be a non-linear classification boundary. But linearly these two classes cannot be separated. So, this is fundamentally the problem which means since this is not linearly separable you cannot use logistic regression in order to separate these two classes. However, we will see that one simple trick actually makes it work. Let me now talk about how this problem can be solved. So, there are two possible solutions to the XOR problem. The first is to use non-linear features. You have to be a little bit careful with how you use non-linear features. We will see later on in the course, this kind of idea uses something called the kernel trick. Okay. But very sim simply, you will have to start using other factors rather than just x 1 and x 2 in order to create a new boundary, whose classification boundary would actually be a non-linear function of x 1 and x 2 and not just a linear function. Okay. There is another possibility which is to add extra layers. I will talk shortly about what this means. This is what is called 
deep networks. Technically speaking, if you add more than two layers, that is when you will get a deep network, but I will just call abuse notation a little bit and call this a deep network. Let me explain how this, how this comes about. So, we know that XOR of two inputs x 1 and x 2 can be written as nor of nor and and that is XOR can be written as a combination of elementary gates that we have already looked at. Okay. Recall we already have weights for the nor gate for the AND gate etcetera. So, which means we can in some sense write XOR in terms of those elementary gates that we have already discovered. How would this look? So, suppose I have X 1 and X 2 as usual I will I add a bias unit which is simply 1 we can call it X naught if we wish. Okay. So, this network here or this expression here now has nor of x 1 and x 2 first. So, let us say I have a nor here. Okay. Now, this is a combination of these three. Let us call these weights something. Remember for the NOR gate W naught was 1, W 1 was minus 2, W 2 was minus 2. I am going to erase this here for a particular reason. Otherwise, the figure would get very cluttered. Now, I also have an AND gate, let us call this AND here. This is another linear combination. Of x 1 and x 2. Okay. So, we will we'll need some notation which we will use shortly, but remember that these weights, these new weights are actually different. If you recall the AND weights were we had used minus 3, 2 and 2. Okay. These were different from the weights that we used for NOR gate. Okay. Let me erase these two, we will use some notation shortly which will make this whole thing clear. Okay. Now, after these the output of these NOR and AND goes to another NOR. Okay. So, you have yet another NOR gate. which needs yet another bias unit. These weights once again were the same weights as this NOR gate. So, you can now see you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 weights here and 3 more weights here. We have a total of 9 weights. The output of this as we know is XOR. I will show this to you quickly in a truth table, so that you can convince yourself. X 1, X 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. I will just write both NOR and AND as output here. So, NOR of 0 0 is 1, NOR of 1 0 is 0, this is 0, this is 0. The second one AND of 0 0 is 0, of 1 0 is 0, 0 1 is 0 and 1 1 is 1. Now, if I do NOR again of this output, NOR of 1 0 is 0, 1, 1, 0 which is equal to the XOR here. Okay. So, let us call these something just to be clear y 1 y 2 this one is NOR of y 1 y 2. Okay. So, this is the XOR gate 
which you get as this combination and we have now written what I will call the neural diagram. The difference of this diagram from the previous diagrams is it has an intermediate layer here, which is the new invention in some sense. This intermediate layer is called the hidden layer, that is because it is neither the input nor is it the output layer, which is all we had been working on before. This layer here is often called the input layer and this layer here is called the output layer. Let us use some simple terminology, because now we have 9 weights, we need to give some terms, we can simply call them w 0, w 1, w 2 etcetera. So, let us call this as unit 1, this as unit 2, I had called it y 1 and y 2, we will make this a little bit more precise later on. So, the weight going from the first unit here or the 0th unit here to this, I will call that as w 0 1. Okay. w 0 1 is from the bias unit of the input layer to the first unit of this layer. Remember, there is nothing that goes from here to here there is only from here to the first unit. So, w 0 1 was the nor weight which is 1. Similarly, w 1 1 which would be this weight was minus 2, w 2 1 which was from here to here was also minus 2, these were the weights of the nor gate. Similarly, we have these weights which are the weights of the AND gate, this was from NOR. Those are W 0, now this is the second unit 2, this is minus 3, W 1, 2 which is 2. which is 2. Okay. Now, we have these weights too, which we have to represent, which are again weights of the nor. And we need some notation for that. Okay. Now, you notice that we have run out of zeros, ones and twos. So, we have to give some slightly better notation. So, what we will do is we will call this layer as layer 1. So, layer 1 is the layer that connects the hidden layer to the input layer. So, these are layer 1 weights and there are 6 weights in total. So, what would we label our final layer weights as? So, once again this is w 0, there is only one unit here 1, but this is now layer 2 1. So, these are the weights of the second layer indicated here as a superscript. You can see therefore, that an XOR gate can be written as a neural network, we will call this kind of diagram a neural network, each of these sitting here are neurons. So, it can be written as a neural network with one hidden layer. It turns out so there is a theorem called the universal approximation theorem, which I am going to define very loosely here that any function k 
can be expressed as a neural network with one hidden layer. So, as it turns out this one hidden layer has tremendous exp expressive power. So, if you pre specify your accuracy, okay, if you have a functional relationship that you would like to express and you want to say that to the accuracy of 10 power minus 6, I want this function to be approximated. It turns out that there exists in mathematical uh, language, there exists one neural network which will do that with a simple one hidden layer. What is not given is how many neurons will you need in this hidden layer. As it turned out for XR, we only needed two, okay, we only needed two hidden neurons. It might happen that for 10 power minus 6 accuracy, you might need billions of neurons for some particular function. But what we do know is that it is always possible and this is what makes uh, deep networks very, very powerful tools. Okay. Now, what would be a good approximation, what number of neurons would you need etcetera, etcetera, that is always questionable. Now, I would like to come with, come up uh, finally end with one simple interpretation of what is happening here. Let us go back to our original diagram, we had these four points. When they were on a single plane, when they were on a single plane, when they were on simply on the x y plane, it was not possible to separate them using a single line. As it turns out, one can interpret, though not in the particular case that we have taken, one can interpret the addition of extra hidden layers as if you are creating new dimensions in the problem. So, I would like you to imagine a specific case. Remember, we had these four points x, x, 0, 0. Now, just imagine the case where you introduced a new dimension into the problem and the two x's were sitting here somewhere above. That the old x's that we had in the problem were actually projections of these two x's that are at a plane a little bit above. Okay. Now, you can imagine that if I have a three dimensional problem, I could introduce a plane somewhere in the middle that would separate these x's out from the o's. So, this will require a little bit of imagination on your part. Imagine these four points are there and you lift these two x's up. Now, what was not linearly separable in a lower dimensional space can actually be linearly separable in a higher dimension. I am not going to prove this or even show this for the XOR gate, but you can see this at least geometrically. As it turns out, it is useful to think about every additional layer as sometimes introducing new dimensions into the problem, which are making problems that looked not separable, at least linearly before, separable later in a higher dimension. In future videos, we will see how to extend this idea of a simple hidden layer into a larger network. The XOR gate and the elementary gates represent good cases for you to build your intuition on how neural networks work. So, I would recommend that you go over these examples a few times in order to understand what is actually happening and why a hidden layer is needed.